Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court affirms elections of Bayosa, Imo, and Kogi governors. The Supreme Court held that it found nothing wrong with the off-cycle of governorship elections to produce Senator Doye Diri, Usman Ododo, and Senator Hope Uzodima as governors of Bayosa, Kogi, and Imo states, respectively. Last year, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, declared the trio um, uh, the winners of the off-cycle governorship poll, which held on November 11, 2023, in their respective states. For Uzadima, INEC said he had polled 540,308 votes, um, you know, out of Ayan with the People's Democratic Party, who scored 71, 503 votes, and Athan Achone of the Labour Party, who secured 64,081 um, votes. Similar situations happened in Bayelsa and Kogi states. The grounds of alleged rigging or non-compliance were rejected by the, both the election tribunal and the appeal court for lacking merit. Not satisfied, they approached the apex court to turn the two judgments for being allegedly perverse. But the apex court disagreed, noting that the appellant could not provide cogent reason why they should deviate from the conclusions of the two lower courts. Now, joining us to discuss this is Barrister Justice Wig, who is a human rights lawyer. Good morning, Ted. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure once more. Yes. All right. So, uh, talking about the the Supreme Court's justice now, it has happened with uh, you know the two lower courts before they moved up to the Supreme Court. Um, the the opposition had been filing saying there are cert cert certain discrepancies with the election. Um, what do you think about this story in general, and what were some things you think um, they brought legally to the Supreme Court? For them to even get to this point well you know the truth is that um in the wisdom of the the judiciary three arms of uh, judiciary is always here to decide issues uh especially pertaining electoral matters one you have the tribunal and after the tribunal you now have the appeal and after the appeal court you now get the Supreme Court. For me, I see it that uh, all the wise men, starting from the tribunal to the Supreme Court, will mm. not be making the same mistake at the same time. Mm. Time. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at it vis-a-vis -vis the judgment we've had in recent times, you know that move to the third floor, which is the Supreme Court, and the final arbiter in any matter in the country, you need to understand. Most times, the judge that people don't understand it the issue of appellate, you know, decisions or decisions. Because what the appeal courts have to do, like the court, is to look at the facts connecting it with the law of what, that's what transpired at the tribunal, at the court of appeal, before it now comes to the, the Supreme Court. And what the Supreme Court will always look at is whether in the judgment so far given by the tribunal and the court of appeal, whether there was a miscarriage of justice in any way, or whether the law was misplaced in any way. And if the Supreme Court looks at these issues politically and critically and discover that there was no miscarriage of justice, the Supreme Court will have no option than to uphold the decision of those courts. Okay, but what were some main, what were like the main legal challenges that were brought against the election results by the opponents? The, the truth is that um, once two people are in court, uh, each person will always make a case or will always want to make a case mm -hmm. before the tribunal or before the court. It that depends on the court what to call preponderance of evidence to weigh the evidence before the court in order to arrive at a decision. It's so unfortunate that we are in a country, especially in Africa and more especially in Nigeria, where uh, people will always want to disagree, especially after election. Yes, we know that after election, there might be one or two issues, non-compliance uh, uh, with uh, electoral ads and mm -hmm. all the rest practices and all the rest. But it's not just enough. You must have to show proof and proof beyond 
reasonable doubt. Well, I'll let me not say beyond reasonable doubt now. At least by, by credible evidence and facts that those anomalies actually happened and took place before the courts will give you what you want. Mm. So, uh, obviously, I'm sure th because a lot of people came out to say there were several irregularities, um, some election materials were not even being brought when it came to the voting, um, voting at the poll at that time. So, isn't the court supposed to take cognizance of all of this, or are they just giving out a ruling just because? Now, you know, when you talk about electoral, for example, electoral material not arriving on time mm -hmm. or maybe a letter like that did not arrive at a particular place and all the rest. Yeah. It is not the fault of the person that has won a letter or that was declared for me. Those ones are technical hitches and problems from INEC. So yeah. how will somebody who run an election and maybe declare winner suffer for you know uh, abnormalities of INEC or the umpire? No, you cannot suffer A for an infringement purportedly committed by B. It is not done anywhere. So th those ones are not what we're looking at. I think what we were looking at is the results so far declared by INEC. We are they genuine, we are they correct, vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the electoral process, where there are my practices and all the rest. If you can prove all this, uh, yeah, the court will look at you and mm -hmm. listen to you which facts and figures before the court can arrive at a, a, a decision. Mm. So if you're saying that there are technical, you know, hitches that we just had to face, and of course it's not the problem of the person who conducted the elections, um, how can we ensure that, you know, we do not have this so that we don't have to, because it seems like every time there's an election, the both parties always, almost 100%, end up in court. And it seems like it's the court that is always now having to um, declare who the winner is. So isn't this now the job of INEC to ensure that there are no irregularities, that the election materials get there in time, there is no election malpractices, just to ensure that they conduct um, a free and fair election so that this doesn't always end up in court the way we've seen in the past few years now? It is still that's the point I was trying to make or mm. make it. The truth there is this. It is the sole responsibility of INEC to make sure that at least on their own part, they do the needful by making sure that electoral materials arrive on time, uh, technicalities are taken care of, at least to a minimal period. Let me tell you the truth. There is nowhere all over the world today, even in America, that election will be 100% correct. It's not possible. We are human beings. There are issues, there are technical issues, which is even human error in everything you do in life. We're not God. But what we are saying here is that let INEC at least to an extent do what it's supposed to do. Then leave the masses. But let me also tell you one thing. Um, that this uh, mentality will have in this side of the, of the world, yeah, especially in Nigeria, uh, you see somebody after election, and your opponent will congratulate you. The same opponent that yeah. congratulates you will still go to court. <laughs> so, I mean, we, yes, we don't have that spirit of horsemanship, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. To me, it's not a do or die affair. Today, I might be running for an election. If, peradventure, something happened and it did not go my way, and I look at it very, very well, critically, and discover that, well, there is no need for rancor, I will definitely come down. Except if there are fundamental issues, mark my word, fundamental issues or fundamental breaches that could, you know, make me to say, no, this thing shouldn't go this way. And those fundamental issues and hitting that will make me not to accept are things we must correct so that it will not happen again. Mm. I don't know whether you understand. So, yeah. like, talking about technicalities, uh, Mistakes from INEC, the umpire, the government, and all the rest. I mean, it should not be the business of the of the contestant of people who are running for an election. Because already, like we used to say, INEC is saddled with responsibility, and they should be fully prepared at any given time.
Mm. I think I quite agree with you when it comes to sportsmanship. I think it's important that even if you don't win, it's okay. You can go again, right? And that's something that a lot of people commended the former president, um, Good Luck Jonathan, for. Because what he did was, you know, he conceded and said, you know what, I, I don't think I want this and I'm just going to go out of the way. And that's how it should be. Because if, you do not, if you're not really seeing so many um, irregularities, like you said, maybe when it comes to malpractice, practices, um, Regan, outright Regan, then there is no need to keep going to the court because it seems like most people now, they just feel, yes, I'm sure there are irregularities. I still want to go to the courts to try my luck. But let's, let's talk about this decision by the Supreme Court right now. Do you think this um, would strengthen or it might even weaken um, the electoral integrity for Nigeria? Because a lot of times, like I said, people are always ending in court. So, in fact, I think there's a saying, um, if, if you disagree with me, go to court. So, how do you think this helps the electoral integrity right now when everybody keeps going to the courts? No, in the first day, if you do not go to court, where will you go? Are you going to resort <laughs> to self help Or are you going to fight? Are you going to do what? Are you going mm. to resort to jungle justice? No. The answer is no. Of course not. It, it, no matter how the system is, we will have to continue trying until we get there, until we get it to right. Now, mm. let me say this. Let me, I'm from Imo State. And let me use Imo State as an example and as a case study. You see, as far as I'm concerned, I was, before the judgment, I was praying. And I was saying, I looked, I, I looked at the whole issues, yeah. you know, before the court. I have examined them. I have looked at them. That's why the fact that I'm not one of the umpires, but as a lawyer, please, I know where I, I put my tent. But because it was still subjugated, there's nothing what can do uh, until the judgment is given. But for me, let me give you an example. Let me tell you what people don't understand. You see, the Supreme Court is the highest court in the country. And any judgment given by the Supreme Court becomes law until that judgment is set aside. Now, by star or standard, the Supreme Court can base its judgment based on public safety, public interest, and public stability. Threatened. Public safety public interest and public stability. Most times, most of the decisions of the Supreme Court all over the world may, give, may differ a bit from, you know, law itself. Let me put it that way. Mm. Because it is only the Supreme Court that can keep a whole country together. It is only the Supreme Court that can give a judgment that will make a country not to be in disarray. Mm. Now, coming to Imo State, for example, this is a governor who has done one term and finished one term. Went for re-election and was declared winner. Now, he has gone almost a year plus. Apparently, less than three years. And if you now truncate such movement or such administration, the states will go back to square one. Mm. The state will start afresh. It is the people of Imo State that will suffer it, and not the person you gave judgment against. No senator who most of them man. It is the people of the state that will suffer it. And of course, you know the saying that when two elephants fight, it is the, the grass that will suffer. Yeah. So for me, I am so happy with this decision, so that there will be continuity. Yeah, but is should, should we, excuse me, so should we just be looking at continuity instead of no, ensuring no, 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 that? No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. It's not what I'm, it's not what I'm saying. Okay. What I mean by continuity is, you know, that, that because if, 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 for example, it has gone the other way, mm. we'll have a new governor. Yes. Who will start afresh. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that the five years plus, of Senator right. will be swept under the carpet. Yeah, but if the other person is the rightful winner, should that even matter in the first place? And it, okay, I think it, this, this no, is even no, a no. very good, this is even a very valid, Sorry, oh, valid point. Yeah, understand my point. Understand yeah. my point. That was why I said 
that most times you can base a judgment based on public stability. Mm. If you remember, if you remember, there was a time uh, during the admission of uh, uh, the former president, uh, 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 President Muhammad Buhari, where it was being said that there were human rights abuses. Mm. He said something that the security of the North nation is even more paramount than the human rights you're talking about. Mm. Because, because no right is absolute. Okay. No right is absolute. There are always curtailments of every right. Now, if you look at public stability, public security, there are certain things you can draw inference. I am not saying, understand me, mark my word. Yes. I am not saying that that was why I said if there are fundamental issues, fundamental bridges, mm -hmm. if there are fundamental facts and figures with evidence to warrant the judgment going the other way, no problem. It will be a sound judgment. Yeah. But that's what I'm concerned. What I see when I studied the whole filings, the whole uh, pleadings and prayers of both uh, parties and candidates, I took this decision as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Now, if you look at the figures, even that declared the government the winner, then the figure of the second and the figure of the third one, yeah. you can see that they are two more far. Even if we talk about rigging, mm. even if we talk about rigging, there's no how. Yeah, we know there's always rigging. In fact, let me tell you the truth, there's no election without rigging all over the world. <laughs> Go to me any day, any time. Yes. Even the countries we are, we say we are copying. Mm. But what I'm trying to say is this. The Supreme Court should always be careful in giving a judgment. And that was why I said that any judgment the Supreme Court gives becomes law until set aside. And can, can I shock you? Mm. What the, the, what the adjudicators will do, like the Supreme Court, once they discover a lacuna, once they discover a lacuna in anything or in any proceedings or pleadings or prayers, they will catch up on that. In order, it, it, when, when it has what to call racial then die in law, and they are what to call obita dictu. If you read that judgment, they are not, have not gotten the CTC of the government to go through it. There are two things you will discover. And that is one mistake many people make. You will discover what is called obitadictum and what is called racial standard. Then what is obitadictum? Obitadictum is a passing comment, a comment made by the court, made by the judges while delivering judgment. But it does not form the reason why that judgment went that side. The, the, the main reason why the judgment was given in that particular direction is what we call the ratio. The ratio is then die. So it is the you know, the, the duty of an intelligent person or, or intelligent lawyer to differentiate between a racial design die and an obitadicto. Mm. So if you read that judgment, you cannot differentiate between the two. All right. So finally, quickly, let's just talk about what steps do you think can be taken to improve our legal processes, especially with the number of post-legal challenges that we have. So how can we mitigate this? I know that the, the Supreme Court has given this ruling. So Imo, Bayelsa, and Kogi State, their governors remain. And of course, if they even had to leave, it would now change the off-cycle election once again, because that's where we are now. That's what even started this. But since it stemmed from going to court, how can we improve our electoral system so that these challenges, because in, in a few years, it just means that even more states will start to have off-cycle elections and Nigeria as a whole, we might not have that, just that one election. So in a bid to combat or mitigate the legal, um, the post-election um, legal challenges that we have, how can we improve the electoral system right now? First of all, mark my word, first of all, what I call sincerity of purpose, mm. both on the side of the INEC, yeah, on the side of the government, and on the side of the judiciary. Hmm. Let me now break it down. <clears throat> On the side of uh, INEC, 
INEC should be able to make sure that before they talk about conducting any election in Nigeria, they are sure, at least 90 percent sure, that they have gotten all it takes, all the logistics, everything in order to make sure that there will not be issues. There could be human errors. There could be natural errors. For I'm sorry to say this, but it happens at times. Some some people might be converting material, uh, letter material to a place, and they, they get to the road, and they will have problem. They can be break down. Anything can happen. Those are, are natural issues that there's nothing you can do about it. But we are talking about the, the human, you know, errors that could be corrected or yeah. could be avoided. Hmm. And that is where Nigerians will start having regard and trust again on INE. Now, All secondly, right. you come on the side of the judiciary, you talk about, okay, look at it. The governor, for example, has to stay a year plus before judgment is given. Hmm. Now, which means for the past one year and the governor, for example, of the Imo state has been distracted, whether you like it or not. Mm. Because somebody who still has a pending matter from the tribunal to court of appeal to Supreme Court, you don't expect that person to relax and think well and think of how to develop the state. It's not possible. Because once he's doing something, he's also thinking on the matter in court. How will be how, what will be the outcome of this matter? Will I win this matter? At times you want to do, carry out a project that will last for two years or three years. You will not say, what if this will remove me? Let me wait. And at the end of the day, waiting, you will not see that the judgment is coming a year after, or more than a year after. What have we achieved? That initiative you have has been from right there. All right. So what I'm trying to say here is this. On the side of judiciary, for me, the judiciary should put up you know, a mechanism to make sure that every electoral matters are dispensed with Please within the next three months. All right. Okay. With, even to Supreme Court within the next three months, so that whoever that is there will yes, can concentrate and do his job. Exactly. Exactly. That is the thing. All right. Yeah, Thank you, you so on the side much. Of the government. Okay. The government should also do the same. Provide mm. enabling environment for right. even political parties and all the rest, so that there will be internal democracy. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I think that is so apt. It's important that everybody who was a key player to this um, gets to do their bid just to ensure that we have a good electoral process in Nigeria and everybody even feels seen and heard. And it's not just even the opposition or the person who won. Every Everybody and the state, the citizens, the people, they do not feel neglected. This is where we have to wrap it up here. Thank you so much, Barrister Justice, for coming and having a conversation with me on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Have a nice day. I'm speaking with Barrister Justice Wig, who is a human rights lawyer, and we've just been discussing the fact that the Supreme Court has affirmed um, the governors of Imo, Bayelsa, and Kogi states as the winners of the election, the off-cycle elections. This is where we have to draw the court in on the show today. Thank you so much for having a breakfast with me. My name is Romer Paulson. I'll see you again. Have an amazing day.